Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on December 7, 2021 at approximately 1011 a.m. PST. I tell you, life is getting busy. Managed to get the, I've started reworking the compendium, or more to the point, the data file for the compendium for the Ilderbachian Chronicles. That's going to be a piece of work to deal with. Of course, it's going to take me about 10 years to get it done because I've got to start doing it, like I've got to do it for each book before, for all 12 of them, before I actually put the compendium into print. That said, Jeremiah's journal is already coming online. Now, the reason I'm going over this partly is for my benefit, partly for yours. This is a major project for me. It's not the primary one I return to this life for. The primary reason I return this to this to this place for this life is to pass on one simple message, and that message is simply that working together we can make this a better world for virtually everybody. Now, do understand, no individual stands alone in ex in this existence. Okay, and it is this reason that I bring the issue up of where I'm standing on the on the Elder Bocking Chronicles at this point. Because for me, the Elder Bocking Chronicles, that's a project for me personally. Now, do I desire to turn into a major, you know, into a major event? Certainly. And I do have a a, a fabulous editor, you know, editor and proofreader working with me. The artist that I've got doing the doing the cover work and the in, and the internal work for the Elder Bocking Chronicles has been doing a remarkable job. I just got the I just got the pictures, um, the artwork for the end of an epoch, which is the sequel to the Birth of the Wolf Pack. Just had them handed to me, and I do know they've been sent to the printer. That said. Um, I also have been just handed a, re-handed a, a copy of the artwork for the, the cover work for the third book, which is Return to Paradise. Okay, now the nice part about it with this is when I, this is the birth of the wolf pack. Okay, now that's the birth of the wolf pack. On the back, you'll see it's it's bordered only on two sides. Well, the reason for that is because when you take all 12 books, okay, and one of my gaming crew actually came, of my current gaming crew came up with the idea, sort of. I kind of extrapolated on it, but this frame is part, because when you take all 12 of these books and you lay them on the table together, three across the top and four down, because there's four trilogies that work hand in hand. But when you put them all together, there are four and there are twelve panels that all fit together. Also, you'll notice the cover. There's a part of a picture here. It's because when you get them all into the into the bookshelf, they create a single picture that runs over twelve books. Okay. Now this is just one of those funny little things that I've been doing one step at a time. Okay. And again, if you put a project on hold, even if somebody, if you put it on hold because other people said it's not good enough, or it's not long enough for whatever, you don't need to, you know, quite frankly, it's not a question of whether other people think it's good enough. Yes, there is no guarantee by anybody that you're going to make it big in, the, in, your, in your project, okay? Whether you're writing, whether you're painting, whether you're singing, it doesn't matter. But don't let other people talk you out of it. If what you're doing is following karmic law, then carry on. Remember, the reality of it is, if you desire to make a mark in this world, aim for a positive one. Okay, just, just a thought. So I've got that on the go now. The compendium for me is very, is very simply a list of everything that's going on book by book. So, you know, where they came in, where they resurfaced, this sort of thing. Okay. Now, this issue of, you know, this issue of working together. 
we have to realize that in today's world, society has taken a massive complication. Okay, it has really gone down a sideways track. Now, is it unsalvageable? Absolutely not, but it's going to take the work and the effort of virtually everybody to do it, starting with your own world. Starting with that which you're going through yourself. Okay. Now, from my end, yes, I still move things around. That's just the way I am. But from my end, it's a very simple issue. Okay. Take a look at the world that you're living in. Take a look at the way your world is. If you're not content with everything about it, okay, then it's time now right here, right now, to start altering the path you're on. Okay. For me, when I was 15, I was asked to write a storyline. Well, here I am, 58, it's coming out, it's coming together. The first book is out, the second one will be out in the very near future. As a matter of fact, when I get done this, done this recording, I have to get in touch with my printer and let her know. Because I've got to get it over. I've got to go through. And I just finished. Can we try one thought? Um, I just finished going through the chapter list for the for the table of contents in the in the in book eleven in the in the end of an epoch. Just got finished it. I'll be going through the rest of it today to put it into place. Okay, very important factor for my end. Now, the nice part about it from your standpoint is what this shows, or at least I hope what this shows, is that no matter how long you've been sitting on a project, you can get it accomplished. Albeit, it won't be in the time, if you were aiming at getting something done by the time you were 20, and you're even 21 at this point, you're not going to get it done by the time you're 20. But... I had a client that really desired to become a doctor, only she put it off until she was literally, she talked to me when she was 51, no, when she was 52. By the time she got into, into going after a medical, she did actually graduate, not by the time she was 20, but at 60 years old, she graduated and got her MD. Now, for her, that was a massive deal, and that's why I supported her as much as I could. Not financially. Don't even think about it. Don't got that kind of money yet. But I did give her all the encouragement and all the guidance I could to, make, to help her get through it. Net result, she ended up with a doctor with her MD. Now, before anybody thinks about it, don't even ask what her name is. We're talking 15 years ago. I have no idea. Okay. But what I do know is that things are shifting for you, they are shifting for me, they are shifting for society. I've seen a definitive shift in the stuff that is being posted. Okay, and it fortunately looks like people are starting to pay a little bit more attention to the positive side of things. This is very important from my standpoint. Now, the easiest trick in the book is when you're taking a look at the way your life is going, ask yourself this. Are you content with the way your life is right now? I wasn't content with the way that my that the Compendium database was set up. So I spent the morning going through that and getting that sorted out. So now when I go back to it, I can go through it and piece it together. One page, one step at a time. For me, that is a major endeavor. And a real positive one from my standpoint. But it's going to take some time to piece it together. That's going to be a long term. The Elder Bakken Chronicles I broke down into 12 books. Okay. Like I've mentioned before, when you've got a project you're working on, pick, cut your, pro your project down to 15 minute to half hour tasks when it's possible. Okay. I'll tell you, when you're writing a book, it takes a lot more than 15 minutes. You'll get lost for an hour or two without even thinking about it, if that's the, the path you're on. The same thing will happen in all likelihood with painting. But when you're doing it, take it one step at a time. Always, always, always give yourself enough time to accomplish your task. 
Because the last thing you desire to be doing, I think, is pushing limits and really putting yourself in a crunch time so that you can't get the job done to your satisfaction. Okay, there's there's a lot of things that you can do, but the first thing you do is decide what you're not content with, and then that's where this little list here comes in. Of course, it's not lying paper now. I've decided to go to this stuff. But it's still the same principle. Okay, yeah, you can sort of read it, I think. Never mind, read it. This is a list of the tasks I started off with. You'll notice I've got check marks down here. These are the ones that I finished. And I've still got others on the go. But this list has helped me keep things organized rather nicely. It's one of those it's one of those tools that I personally use because it works. I know it'll work for you. I actually got it got that tool from a from a very successful businessman. And the way he put it was this by keeping it in by keeping the list together, every you write down three to start with. Finish one off, check it off, and add a third one to the bottom. Don't forget, you still require time to eat and time to sleep. Those are part of those tasks that you put in line. Okay. That is a really annoying high-pitched whine. By the way, this is a live a live recording, meaning I go I go and double check the date when I put it out when I go to put it out when I get finished. If the date is correct, I send it off as is. If not, I end up having to, to repost. I have to end up having to re-record. So far, things are working reasonably well. I kind of had to take a look at myself this morning and go, I got a lot of things I'm trying to do. I got caught up like you. I've got other things I get tied up doing. Today, I got tied up playing Skyrim. Which, I'm sure if you play any video games, you recognize it. The neat part about that particular game is I can actually track it. For me, that's a big plus. Most of the games that are out there, I can't. But, pick a goal, get it listed, and this is why I've got the list here. It makes sure that I only spend a certain amount of time doing things. You know, that is so I can get other things accomplished. Now, from your standpoint, if you think of it this way, there is a saying that one man cannot change the world. Well, technically that is correct, but one can and one person can motivate people to change the world. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not entirely content with the way the world is going right now. Society has lost a lot of its focus, has lost a lot of its interaction, a lot of its communicative capacity or tendency with each other. Now is the time to change that. I couldn't believe it. My, you know, my son showed me. Nope. Scratch that. My son didn't show me. Or did he? Yeah, he did. Anyway, apparently they are making, you know, the, the American military apparently is making autom automated soldiers. Okay. You know, they are AI the whole nine yards. To me, this is just an absolute problem. Would that they would make automatic doctors instead. Okay. If we concentrate on the positive side of things. Okay. If we concentrate on the idea of what can we do to help each other, to work together. Because the negative energy that, that mankind is generating right now is absolutely causing pain for the, for the individual. I call Itza. You call her Earth. Or maybe Gaia. Okay. Um, she told me to call her Itza, so that's what I do. Okay. Now, this said, it doesn't matter what name you use. It's like many of the races I deal with when I'm dealing with the off-worlders, with the UFOs, with ancient races. I may know them by different names than what you know them as. I know for an absolute certainty, I know them from different names, from what governments know them as. But, when you take a look at them, when you take a look at the, at the descriptions and what have you, you'll find they, they fit quite nicely. Which brings me to the other little project I've been working with. And that other little project is 
this. The Races of the World. Okay. This one I'm about, I think, almost three quarters done with the, with the pictures. I've got another artist, an independent artist, from the one doing the Ildebakian Chronicles, doing those. And it's working beautifully for me. Okay. Now, here's the thing with it, where it comes to the people that work with me. Okay. I've always had a problem with the idea that a, that somebody such as myself, who, you know, has trouble with the stick man, I've always had a problem with people taking, you know, buying a, a picture, okay, and they pay for it properly, don't get me wrong, okay, but what they do is they turn around and go, here's the, you know, I'm going to buy the artwork off you, and because of that, I can do what I will with it, and they do it legally, there's no question there. Now, I'm, I'm behind, and one of the things I'm going to be catching up on, I'm going to have to wait until, 2000 and, until 2022 to make a balance with some of this. But I've got to do all the calculations to find out how much I'm behind. But I'm a firm believer with artists, especially if you're writing and you've got an artist doing your cover work. Or if you're a singer and you've got an artist doing your, kind of doing your album work. Okay, the people that are helping with that creative process, it is absolutely imperative, karmically speaking, from my standpoint, that they don't get left in the dirt. Okay, yes, legally you can pay for the picture and carry on with it, absolutely. But let's not forget, you pay that small amount, and then you go on to make money hand over fist with it, which is a cute thought. Okay, but... It works out really well for you. But for the artists that did the work, and way too many of them get left in the dirt. They do the work, and all they get is this tiny little piece. I'm not inclined to do that, but I know for an absolute certainty, right now I'm way behind in what I should be dealing with. So I'm going to be doing an inventory count, see how many, how many books I've got. I've already got the percentages worked out. Okay, the, the bonus is worked out for the money that's been generated. Okay, now there's a reason for that. If I'm making money off of off of my writing, that's fantastic. If I'm making money off of my writing because an artist has helped enhance the writing, then in my opinion, okay, and this is the way that I operate, in my opinion, that artist should still be getting some income. For, you know, some even if it's just a tiny amount. Which is something I'm going to be dealing with. Haven't quite figured out how to get it there, but that's okay. I'll, I'll work that out. In any event, the reality of it is I have a different way of looking at the world. But the tools I offer are the same tools I personally am putting to use. They're the same philosophies in life that I live by. And because of that, I feel very confident that the tools that I offer will work for you as well. Okay, and here's the thing. There are lots of spiritual guides out there that will tell you you should do this, you should follow this path, you know, use these prayers and what have you. And I kid you not, they tell you you should, but when you talk to them, they don't do it themselves. The tools I offer, I do personally put to use. Even where it comes to, now where it comes to the consulting side for life, for business, for, you know, where it comes to dealing with UFOs, dealing with ghosts, that sort of thing. I had somebody contact me the other day, the other day. Apparently they've had a, they've had a problem with new, with new psychic activity, with new, well, they call it a ghost. I haven't taken a look at it overly yet. But the reality of it is the description that they gave, you know, really did point in the direction of something extra happening. Now, I've had people to send me pictures of lights and go, what is this? Well, sorry, not a photo analyst. I can tell you what it looks like. But normally, if somebody sends me a photograph of a picture of lights, you know, any of lights in the sky, I can tell you, yeah, it's lights in the sky. There's something that is not normal to that. But if I don't have a clear picture, I will not be able to tell you if it's real or not, only if it represents something real. 
Okay, I leave the is it real to somebody else to figure out. Okay, now I do encourage you, reach out to the people around you. If you desire to change the energy in your, in, in your community, reach out, get to know the people that you're around. Get to know your neighbors. Not just by name, but have a conversation with them. Get to figure out what drives them, because the more you connect with people, the less likely you are to have a problem. Okay, it, it's just a weird setup. Now, this doesn't protect you entirely. Don't get me wrong on that. But at least it stacks the deck in your favor. Because let's face it, people are far more likely to create a problem for you if you've been mean to them than they are if you've been nice. Now, there is such a thing as being too nice. And what that ends up doing is making being the wrong type of people will take advantage of that. But pick a, pick a goal that you're in the, pick something about your life you're not content with. When I get done this video, I will get it posted. Then I've got to start calculations for, for, the, for the investment that I've already sunk into this business. I have sunk in so I can figure out when I'm actually in the black, when I'm actually making money off of it. I also, as I as I mentioned, I've got to get a hold of, of Sue. Um, I've got to get a hold of my printer as soon as I can. I should really, you know, I should really think before I speak. But I've got to get a hold of my local printer as soon as I can because um, I've got to get a file to her to look at printing. I know there's one thing, as a matter of fact, um, we have to, I'm just making a quick note for myself here. Turn around on this side, and then I don't actually have to have my back at you. This is just something I've got to remove. So that I can put the book to print without the thing I don't want it. But, once I get that done, then I package the picture up. I patcher and package the, the, um, the PDF up. Make the PDF first, and then ship it off to my printer. And let her deal with it as best as possible. Can't quite do that yet. I'm waiting for one piece. What is today? Oh, that's okay. I gave him, I gave, I'm waiting for a testimonial to come in to include in said book. But I'll get the rest of it ready. I won't be able to send it to her, but I will be able to call her. Okay. And once I've talked to the print to the printers, then I'm ready to go to the next step. As you can see, I'm getting very close to putting the end of an epic to print. Okay. Then I carry on with the rest. But and I don't know if I mentioned this. See, I've got the twelve books that are that are already designed. I'm already in the middle of writing them. But in the middle of working on book 12, in the middle of working on Return to Paradise, something dawned on me. And all of a sudden, I have another book all lined up to go to and go to work on after these ones come out. So, as it turns out, I'm not going to be stopping writing anytime soon. You know, it's just not going to happen. But there's a lot of work to be done. Okay, especially since I've got other books that I do desire to get to print. Come to think of it, I've got to find the PDF for where to go. PDF for this file. This little book here. That's Mr. Dreamcatcher. It's a children's book. It's also going to Author House pretty quick to get printed. Okay, and then it too will be available on... It'll be available on Amazon, on AuthorHouse.com, on Barnes & Noble, and on Indigo and & Chapters. Now, in all, in all fairness, I don't know if you have, if you've got access to, which ones of those you've got access to. And of course, in the European markets, I have no clue. Okay, let's face it, I'm a little brain dead in that, in that department. But what I do know is this is a project I've been working on for some time, and these projects are finally coming to fruition. And I will tell you, 
when you've got a project that you've been working on for a long time, it's nice to see it progress. One step at a time, you know, you're always going one step closer, usually. One step closer to your goal. But this doesn't happen on your own. It will require the input and the assistance of many people on your journey. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Okay. I've had, you know, I remember having one client call me up regarding a metaphysical problem. And when she phoned, she, she told me right off the bat she was very Christian and shouldn't have been phoning me because, well, I'm a working psychic. Now, in all fairness, I use the term psychic only because that's the word that most people seem to recognize. I've always classified myself as a spiritual guide. But she phoned up and she apologized. She said she shouldn't have been talking to me. But she couldn't go to her bishop. She was Roman Catholic. And she said if she'd have gone to her bishop, the bishop would have told her all sorts of things about how evil she was. And the problem she didn't feel was her. Well, as it turned out, she was right. She phoned me up, and the racket was phenomenal. Okay, and I asked her, what the heck was going on? And she said, everything in my kitchen is flying around in a circle right now. I said, yeah, that's a problem. So I explained to her how to, I took a look at what, what the problem was, and I explained to her how to deal with it. But I said, I said, there's only one problem here. When we stop the vortex, everything's going to hit the floor. So I hope you don't have anything that's airborne that is, you know, that is irreplaceable, that has a heavy, you know, a real solid emotional connection for you. If you do, try and catch it before you do this. If not, because it'll hit the floor. And bearing in mind, we had a lot of China in the air. Okay. And I told her, I said, the second we close it, it's going to hit the floor. So she said, go ahead. So I explained to her how to do it and walked her through and we shut the vortex down. Well, sure enough, everything that was flying around in circles in the room hit the floor. Well, China does not handle a seven foot drop. Not well, anyway. But we did close the gate for her. Okay. And this is what I mean by we all travel different paths. You may be a phenomenal organizer. Maybe you're an accountant that is absolutely instinctive and right on the money. Okay. Everybody has a strength. Everybody has a weakness. There will always be somebody better than you. And there will always be somebody more challenged. So what I'm encouraging you to do is really take a look at your life, what you're not content with, and start altering that. Because if all of us get together and alter those little pockets of energy, as in, you alter what's going on in your life, I alter what's going on in mine, it will create an overall change. Okay, if you want to see how that works in, in visual context, you can go back with, take a look at dominoes. You push one domino over, and it will knock over all of them if they're set up right. Okay. Take a whole pile of matches of the old wooden matches. Stick them into a you stick them into a ball of plasticine, a ball of of styrofoam, and then you light them. Now stick them in close because you're only going to light one. But the heat is going to set off a chain reaction. Okay. And you set it up right, as in you take the ball and Let's just say we have a have it's not a ball, but even if you have a have a rectangle, right? You set one pan one patch up here, one bundle up over here, uh, okay, and then you set a, a number of them that are close together, just individuals, so that when you light the match in the middle, it goes out and takes out both sets, okay. It, it will change things because the energy does radiate outwards. But that will give you a visual, a visual impact. Which is kind of interesting, especially if you've got kids. Now, do understand, we are talking fire. If you're doing that, make sure you're away from everything flammable. You know, I mean, you'd think that was common sense, but it really isn't, it would seem. So be very careful 
whenever you're playing around with science, with science experiments, be very careful to make absolutely certain that you've got supervisory input from somebody that knows what they're doing. Okay, and by the way, that somebody may not come from a standard source. Okay, now, for me, it's real simple. Oh, look at that. We ran way too far. So, I'm going to close this off. I will be back again tomorrow. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other, and for pity's sakes, stay positive.